Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We begin by discussing changes I've made to the Maya space plane. In particular, I have made a new part, a back end to it, and this was primarily to add mass, uh, because now we've got a more massive part here that is heat shielded. Uh, the dry mass of these tanks is 500 kilograms. This is only one quarter the length of one of those, but we made it a little bit heavier than that. It's containing the RCS fuel that we previously had in the pods up there, and also the RCS ports are now built in. Uh, so that's some benefit. I decided to make the unlock cost, since this isn't equivalent to any existing part, um, I've made the unlock cost 10,000, so we do have to unlock it since everything involved in it was unlocked before anyway. Uh, this is a bonus for the people who are taking our money. And um, uh, the base cost is 1000 uh, So it's equivalent to one of the actual fuselage tanks, uh, which is generous. Uh, I think it's more than, uh, more than necessary, so I'm overcompensating a bit in case there is any sort of question mark. It's even human rated and everything. But it does uh, solve a few of our problems. First of all, it uh, helps protect the engines a little bit more. Hopefully, and now our body's flap is a little bit smaller, uh, which hopefully doesn't drag the center of lift too far back. Uh, you know, we had a much bigger body flap before, uh, and the purpose of it was mainly to protect the engines since we have a canard now to help with the pitch. So the body flap isn't really doing pitch. In fact, it's pitch. Uh, the control is limited. It is limited to seven degrees so it doesn't hit the engines. Uh, so yeah, we didn't really want that much body flap and now this is doing some of the work but not all of the work. Now this wing is not the shape I wanted the wing to be, but it's how it is. And right now if we do the transonic design analysis, um, it's like this. And mainly we've got sort of a landing gear problem right here and I can't entirely avoid that, but otherwise it's pretty smooth. But also I've decided to change the solar panels instead of having the extending ones. Of course, now we have non-extending ones. This is a huge benefit in terms of price. Uh, the old hinged solar panels that we were using had uh, 140 watts each, and they had a cost when we had them on here and properly sized. These are very small. We had, them, we had to make them much larger. Uh, for 140 watts, uh, we ended up with a price, well that is interesting actually, maybe I had an older version, let me see. I don't know why. The ones I had on the space plane before uh, were a cost of 700 a piece, which was very expensive. And so for the six of them, uh, we were talking about 4,200. Uh, that wasn't good, but for some reason it's giving me a different cost now than we had on the previous one. Let me show you. Uh, here it says 700 here, but that was tech level 2, but 140 watts. So if we had tech level 4, it'd be cheaper. But anyway, they're 200 a piece and give 156 watts. So like, they're just as good and they're a lot cheaper. Even with the other price that we had, they're a lot cheaper. So I will gladly purchase these. <laughs> That's a uh, big benefit and cuts down our price and integration time and all that business too. So we do have to unlock this one as well. I'll just do that here. So yeah, uh, the net effect is that it drags our center of mass a little bit further back. We could, I could make it heavier. I mean, I've just invented the part. So when we have no fuel in the body, disregarding the RCS slash OMS fuel, it's like this. So we also cannot have full RCS OMS, but we would expect some of that to be depleted anyway with the RCS maneuvers. We want this as close as possible. I've moved the docking port to be where I think I want the center of mass so that we can check in orbit and see whether it is there. I could probably make the vertical stabilizer smaller. I'll think about that, but that depends on how we are flying at about Mach 5. We'll see. Um, yeah. So, we'll have to keep this in mind. If we have some fuel up here, any fuel up here, um, it's fine to have fuel back here as well. In fact, uh, if we don't have any fuel back there, we could pump some back or move some of this back into the medium uh, middle tank. So, 
That is all stuff I have to think about as we're coming down. Oh, that's pretty balanced right there, as long as you don't have this tank full. That tank drags everything back. Now our, our landing gear is pretty far back as it is, but we, we don't really have to worry too much about that. We're not going to pitch up a whole lot during landing, I don't think. Um, I don't anticipate landing like that. So anyway, that is the Maya B uh, with this sort of wing. And again, that's a huge wing and I would rather not have it like that, but it seems to be what we need right now. So we'll see how it goes. So here's the Maya B on the Deneb A4, and we are going to build this. Integration time 60 days, and we will see how it goes. That will still be before our Mars probe arrives at Mars. So I suppose that will be what we are doing. Should we queue something else as far as science? Yeah, probably cannot be retracted. This one doesn't say cannot be retracted though. Nor does this one. So we could get even better solar panels. This one does. That one we can't. Oh, did I not queue up the HM7? I thought I had done that. I think we were already using the Viking 5B. I'm so confused about these upgrades. I think we should queue that just because I think we're already using it. <laughs> uh, let's, let's be fair. And then we'll get the HM7 because we probably ought to. I don't think they've added the space station program yet, so we'll hold off on the space station parts. That's a whole other story. Uh, uh, the mission training for the proto space plane expired for our astronauts. Well, we'll wait on that then. Okay, here we go again. Hopefully I've got the engine action grouping right. I think I do. Uh, but when we want to turn off the four engines on the core is a good question. But anyway, SAS on, throttle, okay, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Yeah, that wing shape is very different. <laughs> I'll think of something else. There's a bunch of possibilities. Okay, looking good. And we're now past the sea sound and not looking good. Uh, we've got one of the booster engines off. I'm gonna dispose of that particular booster. Ooh, I really need to do that while firing the Separatrons, but anyway. I always do that without firing the separatrons. We may need more reliable boosters. Okay, cutting four of the core engines, separating the boosters. Can we really be on this one engine for two minutes more? We gotta find out. Got a thrust weight ratio of one. <laughs> Oh, was uh, 7.2 G's still. Maybe I should just turn off two here. Or leave two on. But we'll see how it goes. This is definitely pushing its burn time though. We'll see. We don't even have full flight data because this is uh, Viking 5 slash 6. Well, having two would also help us control roll, that's always nice. Okay, well it did last full time, but that's definitely pushing it. So probably two engines there. And we could probably cut the other three off a little bit earlier, and then avoid the 7Gs. Oh, we should probably pitch up here. This is a longer burn time than I've planned for. Well, we're probably going to rely on the OMS system a little bit more this time. Okay. I still wanted to get into a one and a half hour orbit. 
we're already recharging, so we don't feel a particular need to test that. We're really close to where we ought to retroburn, though. But I'll try and make a full orbit, uh, one and a half hour orbit, and then continue. Oh, that's more than I wanted. More is sort of fine, though. We're gonna retroburn pretty quickly right now. 160, what, let's say 170, and we'll bring it down even sharper than before. I don't know if that's the best, because the wings are supposed to help. <laughs> the wings are supposed to help. Well, let's just finish off this fuel. Okay. And then ignition of the OMS system. I wonder why we seem to have excess helium. That's all balanced and about the half that we were expecting. Oh, I locked the forward fuel. We can unlock that. It doesn't matter, those should be balanced too. Let's see the center of mass, shall we? Well, so it's a little bit behind the docking port. And we can probably move this fuel into here. It's getting closer. Got negative 60 kilometer periapsis right now. We could use the OMS just a little bit more and sort of... Okay, we'll say negative 80. Well, oh, we're here right now, at about 160 kilometers coming in. Just a one orbit deal. We are in the atmosphere. Okay, we're below 100 kilometers. It's starting to use a bit of up pitch. So I'm gonna move this fuel back a bit. Bottom engine is still overheating. We're able to hold 40 degrees right now though, approaching 80 kilometers, so there's that. The bomb engine blows though, uh, we're gonna have trouble holding the nose up. Maybe I should pitch down a bit. Uh, I was hoping that it would shield the bottom engine more, but it doesn't seem to. There that goes. It doesn't hurt to pitch that much. Well, let's go back to 40. It's got to be that way. The nose is getting heat again. In terms of pitch, we're not ideally balanced, but we're balanced enough so that we can hold the pitch to 40 degrees, so that's not helping. We are going up right now. That's not entirely helping either. <laughs> uh, we'll see though. Well, maybe we can pitch even higher. Not really. 40 is about as good as it goes. And we're about to lose the cockpit again. I don't know. Somebody in the comments said that the Mark 1 cockpit isn't particularly good at this. Now, they've added just a little bit more heat tolerance in terms of the skin. Now, we've got 2200, now it has 2273. I guess I might do that, but we may need other remedies. Well, you know, let me set that aside for now as we are approaching a tremendous amount of funding, and that will give us more leeway. In fact, it would be enough to unlock the Mark 1-3 pod or even Apollo, I think.
Oh, how's the... This one, of course, is dwindling. Let's see about that Mars flyby, shall we? Okay, we are here with Duna 3, and we have comms, and we are in Mars SOI. We have 50% comms, so that's not bad. Uh, let's activate avionics and start this stuff. Okay, we're not pointing even vaguely at the sun anymore. <laughs> Okay, but um, right now the first thing to do is get the periapsis into positive territory as it is not. It's on the right side though for communications, but it's not positive. So, okay, ignition. And shut down. That's pretty good. Well, I didn't see anything about Phobos and Deimos, so we're not doing those. <laughs> uh, looks like the line back is fine at that periapsis, all right. Could have tried to hit one. Fly by one, anyway. We've got some extra Delta V. But since we're not getting anything for it yet, I'll leave that be. Otherwise, I would correct the inclination right now and bring the inclination up in line with Phobos, or, uh, Phobos and Deimos. They're basically in line. And then try for them. This science, of course, but we can wait. It's better, uh, since we've got the long-term science on here, we might as well just leave it. And make sure... I don't know how high we need to be in order to get the high over Mars, so I'll just assume... Same height as Earth. No, let's try that for a sec. I trust nothing is going wrong while I'm not looking. Should already have fulfilled it, right? Oh, I guess we're not... Where's our science? Come on, transmit that telemetry. There we go. Rest is gonna take a long time. Okay, ignition. Another... Bandy view. Mars is at least more textured than Venus, after all. Maybe on the ones that we send next time to fulfill the Mars orbit mission, we'll actually get them to visit Phobos and Deimos or fly by. And we've captured. And that's probably good enough. And shutting down avionics. And we've got recharge course. Hopefully for at least the time it needs to gather all the science, which it is getting very, very, very slowly. <laughs> yep, it's gonna be a bit for these, but that's, I mean, we put it on it, because, put those on it because it's an orbiter and can do a chunk of them at least, if not finishing them. All right, back to Space Center. Okay, let's get that Mars orbit one. Bowling solar panel, 21,000 to unlock, but unlock credit we've got a lot of. Actually, maybe we're getting close to the amount that we could unlock a pod for. Oh, we do have the fuel cells, but yeah, they do cost a lot. And they're probably horrible fuel cells. Unlock costs 5,000. This one is only 1,300. One per second. Well, we'll see whether that's applicable to our space plane or not. You know what? I'm gonna decide not to mess with what worked. We'll just leave it be. We won't change anything. And we will build two. Okay, so since I have nothing better to do right now, since we're waiting for the next Mars window on one front, and I don't know what to do about the Maya spacecraft on another front, and that means that 
we're just waiting for money in order to unlock one of these pods or something like that, we could use the Mark I lander can. That's always a possibility, but uh, you know, it still seems like a last resort uh, for the EVA purposes. But yeah, I decided to take a look at the Mark 1-3 pod ahead of time to see what goes on. But uh, first of all, the bottom node of this isn't in the right place. That, that, that alone is worrisome. Um, so obviously I've tried to get a good heat shield for it. But I have to tweak the heat shield up. As usual, I've made it a little bit bigger just in case. And I've uh, configured the heat shield as a Gemini heat shield for now because the early lunar ones are really expensive. So we'll leave that be. This is the same service module that we had before, but I'm trying to figure out the power situation. I would like this Mark 1-3 command pod to be workable for us all the way to lunar stuff. And of course we'll change the service module, but uh, that means that we need to have the power balanced instead of just good enough for a day. And even good enough for a day is tough with the solar panels we've got. We've got all sorts of problems as far as the solar panels are concerned. Uh, so taking a look at these new folding solar panels, well, they're, they're not a whole lot better depending on which version you go for. The one times two is not great. Um, there's these Juno ones. Pretty expensive though. I mean, you're talking about adding 7,000-ish to our cost. I don't know what the risk is if we shut down the avionics here. That's perpetual, but I I don't know if that's supposed to hurt the Kerbals at all or something. I, I recall Kerbalism taking some power for the Kerbals. One would expect that. And, you know, right now we're planning with... Oops. Gosh, that was lag. Weird. Okay, uh, we're planning with two Kerbals on board in theory. Oh, well, that was fast. Anyway, something weird there happened. But, yeah. So, I don't know what's uh, going on with the power exactly, but I'm guessing we can't turn the avionics off on the pod. But aside from the solar panels, I was looking at the fuel cells. In fact, I already have the hydrogen and oxygen there. I've just kept it to a 2 to 1 ratio since, for the most part, these fuel cells seem to be in a 2 to 1 ratio, pretty close to it. So that's what I've put in for now. And well, here's the problem with the fuel cells. It doesn't seem to know about them very well. I don't know how to get it to give me the right numbers for the fuel cells. Now orientation really doesn't matter for fuel cells. <laughs> I'm a dope. Um, is it? No. It's supposed to understand fuel cells. Now we have the fuel cell fuel in here. In fact, well, it says perpetual there. This this kind configure. It seems like it ought to. Sometimes it does read the fuel cells. But even when it does, it only reads one of them. And I've got this other one here. So yeah, planning wise for the fuel cells, it's a little bit tough. Now, logically speaking, <laughs> if I can dare to use logic here, if we have two of them, that's two kilowatts, which would serve our purpose in theory. And taking a look at consumption, well, we've got 400 liquid hydrogen here. That should be nearly 800 hours. 800 hours is a lot. 800 hours would do the trick. I mean, 800 hours is 30-ish days. So, well, 30-ish days for one, so 15 days for two. Still, it'd work exactly the way we want it to. But why does Kerbalism not like this? Why? That's what worries me. So, yeah. Uh, we can configure it to dump the water. I'm not going to have extra water capacity here. So, I don't know what's going on there. By the way, as far as fuel for our uh, stuff is concerned, we'll convert this to MHM on 3 now. And then fill this up for it. 
And that gives us 462 for low Earth orbit, which is just fine. Well, I guess we'll have to try the fuel cells and just see them see if they work practically. But like this fuel cell array better? It does like the fuel cell array better. Does it matter if there's two or one? If there's one, it doesn't even read it at all. Oh, now it doesn't read it if there's two. It magically had exactly the amount that we were consuming too, so that's suspicious. Yeah. Okay, so lots of question marks there. Then we have to have a launcher that can launch this. So let me take a look at that. Okay, so having attached the rocket to our Mark 1-3 pod, it looks like that the uh, Teneb with the four boosters will be able to handle the pod, plus its service module. Uh, I wanted to limit the thrust to weight ratio, and to do that I've reduced the utilization of these tanks so that the core is heavier when they finish off, and that gets us to 4.75. I was trying to lower it further, uh, so let's say 67% utilization, and you can see that gets us to 4.4, but then the propellant GSE is not okay. I don't know why, we're still fine on the mass, but so that's why we're not going to go that low. <laughs> so we are going to have it be 4.57, and so that will be the burn times and such. And so we're fairly lightweight for this pad. And then we have the Viking 4C stage here, and then the Hydrolock stage here, and then we've got sort of a CST 100-ish kind of thing going on. And I've been a good, good Kerbal and decided to put the abort system up here. Um, and that actually, uh, these things have, uh, let's say, 23 tons of thrust. So that's 46 tons of thrust, and the pod is about 8 tons. Uh, with its uh, without its service module, so basically what we've got there, um, actually it might be less. It might be more like this. I think that's with the service module. So we're talking about six to seven Gs, not a whole lot, but probably good enough. Anyway, that's going beyond the Call of Duty as far as I'm concerned. We we're actually using the Mercury. Uh, capsule escape system up there. Um, we'll have to pay 8,000 to lock it, that un unlock it. That's just for looks. We're mainly using these uh, D2 block I abort motors. I've decided that that might be legal. They're just big separatrons as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, but that's another 10,000 on the unlock cost. But that saves us a lot. I mean, that's better than using the Apollo launch escape system. That's 750,000. Even this Block D launch escape system is 155,000. I don't really know what get, that gets us. So... has a solid rocket motor. Okay, well anyway. So we have it like this, and that's just a empty tank. I don't know if there's any catches, but if there are, we'll just not have an escape system. I'm trying to be nice here. Anyway, the tooling cost is 80,000 because we have these new fairings here, and they're 4 meters in order to accommodate the pod, so yeah. That's the most expensive item, and then we have many avionics units actually. Uh, there's one to control the pod up here. Since I want to have it potentially have a different service module, I've made it a 10 ton one, and it's uh, mature deep space avionics. And then we have to have a different core here because it's carrying a heavier payload. I decided to oversize that and make it 25 and also make it mature uh, near Earth. And so that's what we've got. I don't know, uh, is there any benefit over deep space anyway? The deep space avionics will probably be heavier, so yeah. And then we have a new one here, 
Probably didn't need a new one there. I was sort of going with the flow and made it 65 tons. Uh, the regular one was 60 tons, probably after we removed the launch escape system. Well, maybe not. Um, maybe we need a 65 ton one there. So that's an another cost. And that's basically what we're paying for. No new one here. So 800,000 altogether and our unlock credit is 346,000. So we need to earn 450,000 plus. And I don't have a name for this sucker. I guess in this case we are using the built-in RCS. I may add RCS up front, there's space for it. We do have a docking port at the top, which we're using as a decoupler for the launch escape system. It's just the propellant only one. They had to run off of MMHNTO, huh? Instead of MHMON3. Well, temporarily, I'm just gonna call it KTS for Kerbal Transport System. Maybe you guys can suggest a new name. We're losing money right now because we're building those rockets, but we can build them slower. Mars Windows, April 1st, 2001. These will be ready. If, uh, maybe... No, not if we have only 100. 200, yes. Okay, yeah, I just have to wait. I mean, if I had an, an answer for our Maya space plane, that would be a different story. Then we could do that. But I don't, so... Maybe before configuring the new cores, I should just get this one and get better cores. Let's queue that up. Okay, now the money's rolling in. And we'll soon have the astronaut complex, which has been sucking our budget. You know, at a cost of 500000 Soon that'll be done. Got some extra cores here. Large scale avionics. Why on earth is KOS up? <laughs> who has who has KOS to be here? Okay, so having gotten the upgraded ones, I'm going to tool everything. We'll start off with that. We are now approaching the peak here. We're 122 days from the Mars window now after time warping through more than a year. And we've got the two rockets ready to go. Well, let me get some more science queued up. I don't even know what I want. I guess I'll do lunar landing. And space station prototypes. Might as well. Maybe the lunar rated power next. Okay, we're about two weeks out of the Mars window. I'm rolling one out. Uh, we need to get more staff at the pad. Wonder if we have enough now. Um, I think so, barely. Oh, maybe not. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we've already done the rollout, so I guess I'm going to unlock this thing. We're going to use the pod for moon missions anyway, so I hope it's okay for that. <laughs> I hope it's okay for that. All right. Um, oh, we hadn't purchased the Gemini heat shields yet. Okay. We'll have to wait. Well, I want to have enough time to recondition the pad and then roll that out. Alright, let's try to launch. Okay, a bit dark, but here we go. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Hopefully after all that time warping, like we've time warped through more than a year. Hopefully our commsats are still working. That's a concern. I guess we should try and launch some more. 
should have taken the time to do that. Okay, booster set. Core set. Bearing set. Okay, separation and ignition. Still, we'll have plenty to transfer with, so no problems, and that's all we can do with this stage. I still have the straight ones instead of the tilted ones. Okay, good enough. Yeah, 4,500 meters per second. Well, let's see. Should take much less than that. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Uh, 287 day transfer time though. Oh, something still works. The Leosats. Well, that's Ascension. Yeah, Leosats are still working. Haven't checked out the geostationary ones though. Okay, starting fuel down and ignition. Okay, on escape. And shut down. All right. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we're too far. Well, that looks like a mid-course adjustment situation. And decoupling will probably do all of it. Let's decouple. Well, oh, no. Okay, well, that's definitely mid-course adjustment territory. The Orbit Mars contract doesn't even require us to send any science back. And let's shut down the avionics. But okay, this is on its way and has mid-course adjustment planned. And we'll get that as the alarm. And it's okay. So... Next time we'll roll out the next one and send it on over and hopefully hopefully we'll have enough money to finally actually build a rocket with our Kerbal transport system and we'll be able to do the EVA. That is the goal and uh, hopefully I can figure out something for the Maya spacecraft or I'll have to design a completely new space plane using like pseudo mark II parts or maybe just the actual mark II parts we'll see i'm intent on the space planes but they have to actually be properly heat shielded so um given the fact that even if we hold the 40 degree pitch the maya space plane doesn't seem to be able to survive um that's not a good thing for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.